is about Pete Hexit. It's great to have you on. So great to be here. Let me let me go through the first story. I mean, again, we got a lot of we'll go through. So first story, Harvard to stay silent on issues that don't impact universities' core function, right? Universities' core function. Okay. So when we hear a story like this with Harvard, for the longest time, many of us, when we think about Harvard, we think Harvard, we think Oxford is the pinnacle, right? Cream of the crop where you go to where you put that thing on the wall and you brag about it. This story is a CNN story. Harvard University announced it will no longer weigh in on public matters that don't impact the Ivy League school's core function, following a working group's conclusion that Harvard must defend the university's uh, autonomy and academic freedom when threatened, but should not issue statements on matters that do not directly affect the university's core function. The working group's uh, report warned that the integrity and credibility of the institution are compromised when the university speaks officials on matters outside its institutional area of expertise. This decision comes after former President Claudine Gay stepped down and controversy and plagiarism allegations arise. Thoughts on this story? <laughs> well, it says it, unless it affects the university's core function. What is the core function of Harvard University at this point? Nobody really knows. It's a hedge uh, fund with classrooms. 100% correct. Uh, th- you mentioned that I, that I graduated from Harvard. It's true. But what you missed is that about... Four years ago, uh, live on Fox and Friends, I brought my Harvard degree on set, and I tore it open. No way. Pulled it out and wrote Return to Sender on it. Nice. Crossed out Harvard University and wrote Critical Theory University, and I mailed it back to him. Are you kidding me? 100% live on the air. Holy, is this clip up there, (laughs) It's out there somewhere because I refuse to be associated with that institution any longer. Because we can't be holding up the lunacy of places like that as the impromptu, as the uh, height of excellence of what we want for our kids when it's poisoning the minds of and you know what the moment was that broke it for me it and there, there could have been any number of them and, yeah. for, and at this moment is the way they treated jewish students which is that's the one there it is right there. Yeah. nice <laughs> um <laughs> it was it was the moment they announced remember harvard university was founded to train ministers that's what it was mm-hmm. originally founded to do when they announced their new chaplain for the university was an atheist I thought, you know what? You don't really know what your core function is here, do you? Uh, I'm done. I'm done being associated. And I think we, ha- we have to. These universities are gone. This is a lie from Harvard. Of course, they'll weigh in on everything they think is, um, follows their, their progressive ideology. They just got caught when it came to Jewish students in Israel with how, extreme bias. How, well, let me ask you this. Like, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, what's the one movie? Untouchables, right? Like, you can't do nothing to them. Oh, we're untouchable. Or... You know, certain people reach saint status. There's nothing you can do about them. They're saint status. How consequential could this be to Harvard with the types of decisions they've made? Obviously, the last eight months, we're talking since October 7th, yep. but also during COVID, the last four years when they said, yeah, you know what? Even though your kids are not going to be staying on campus, you still have to pay the full price. <laughs> While their money accounts getting bigger and bigger and bigger, how consequential could this be for Harvard? It could be. I hope it's massively consequential. They've seen application numbers drop. So kids, are, families are deciding, OK, it isn't the pinnacle to try to go to Harvard. I, I also think businesses, and you know this better than I do, they see the types of students they're getting, law firms, the type of lawyers they're getting, and they're not getting constitutional scholars. They're getting activists. Mm-hmm. And they said, you're actually creating more problems inside my corporate culture and my business than you are adding value to it because you decide to come in and spew your DEI nonsense to me uh, and, and your grievance matrix. So it, it takes a while. I think – Abandoning these institutions, um, letting them become just woke cesspools is fine. They are what they are. We just have to create our own institutions that actually have the right core function. Tom, what do you think? Uh, Rob, I'm going to send you this thing here because <clears throat> Ken Griffin, we all know who Ken Griffin is. Yep. I think he's a, a 20 or $40 billion guy. He's got money. So if you guys are thinking about starting a GoFundMe, he's going to be okay. <laughs> so this guy, uh, who, according to Forbes, just last April, we're talking a year ago, he didn't give a million dollars to Harvard. He didn't give $10 million to Harvard. He didn't give $20 million to Harvard. Rob, if you can pull up the story, this is how much money Ken Griffin, billionaire, gave to Harvard last year. Go lower. You'll see, I think it's a third or fourth paragraph. Well, you see a number if you zoom in right there. Last one. Griffin, the founder and CEO of Citadel, has donated generously to his alma mater since he graduated in 89, including a $300 million gift last April to the Faculty of Arts and Sciences and a $100 million gift. In 2014, Vinny, that's 450 mm-hmm. on two donations. And he's saying, 
I'm out. Done. I'm out. Tom, how consequential? As somebody that's from academia yourself, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, first of all, when I read this, I mean, th- this when whole— When I say I, could be, I just want to pay, well, the, pay the respect yeah, to yeah, some of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Basically, this, this announcement just reeks. Uh, this is PR stunt. I, when I finished reading this, all I could smell was horse shit. And I said, man, there's a pony in here somewhere. You just have to find it. And so here's what the pony is. The pony is they were embarrassed on Capitol Hill when Claudine Gay and the president of MIT and the president of Penn all could not answer questions with a simple answer. Will you protect Jewish students that are being persecuted and feel physically, you know, insecure about safety? Will you do something about that? And they, they, they couldn't say yes, they would do about it. And they were embarrassed on Capitol Hill. And then the changes made in leadership. Then Add insult to injury, they allowed protests to become encampments and then encampments to to be almost to, to allow to negotiate with the school. First of all, you're breaking the law. Second of all, you're breaking university policy and you're doing all this. And then the universities negotiated with them. Later, University of Alabama was like, get the hell out of here. Your permit's over. You've had your protest. You've had your demonstration, freedom of speech. You've done your piece. Now go home, damn it. You know, it's done. And so what has happened here is... Harvard was cornered and Harvard had to do something. And so what are they doing? They went away navel gazing and thinking and they came back and they said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We are not going to public. We're going to announce publicly that we're not going to announce publicly an official university position. And that was the one that was in the press release and was in the words of the, of the, um, uh, um, on the president's lips, which was officially comment on the official position of the university. So they're they're stuck in a corner, PBD, and all they can do is make this little announcement that says, if it doesn't have to do with the core function of the university, which is not education, I said it before, which is running a hedge fund of which less than 12% of the revenue per year is actually tuition. Um, if it's not talking about the official mission and function of the university. We're not going to comment on these things. Well, I'd like to know when they not comment when another group comes and protests in the student square and says, we're not leaving unless you negotiate with us. And when it's time to not comment, I'd like to know what Harvard's going to do. But they're really stuck. This is, and like most of academia is stuck. And by the way, most of the Ivy Leagues started as seminaries, by the way. Oh, yeah. The Ivy League, most of them Absolutely. were seminaries, and they were centers of America, of early Americana. What a shame. And what, were... what a shame to go from that to where to... you are today. <clears throat> exactly. yeah. What a shame for that to be taking place. I have a question for Pete. Uh, because it's funny, when, when PBD did the intro, and he's like, you went to Harvard, you literally rolled your eyes. <laughs> like, I, I didn't, you might have been, like, proud about it, because typically an alma mater, the whole premise is that you have pride in where you went to school. Uh, and there you are rolling your eyes. I think Harvard is number one, by the way, when it comes to endowments, $50 billion. You said that's a hedge fund that um, basically teaches classes. You know, when you said, who is the number one client of a university? We're thinking, well, it's the kids, well, it's the parents. It's actually the donors, the mega donors, the Ken Griffins of the world, or the Bill Ackmans of the world, who have all been disgusted what's going on out here. But the, the, all, the motto of Harvard is Veritas, the truth. So uh, I want you to be a little truth teller here. What would it take for you to give money to Harvard again? Or, or possibly if your kids got accepted to Harvard, <laughs> would, your kids, would you be encouraging your kids to go to Harvard? What would you do? Absolutely not. Really? Absolutely not. I, I've got a list. It's about five schools long of schools that I, as a father, would be willing to spend my own money if they would like to attend. Are you comfortable mm. sharing, though? Because I, uh, a few of them. I, I, well, Liberty University, um, College of the Ozarks. It's, it's down in Missouri. I love New St. Andrews College. It's in mm-hmm. Idaho. Um, that's a few of them. There's okay. a few more. Yeah. I've got it on my iPhone. Everywhere I go on different events, people say, well, what about this school? Have you looked University at it? University of Florida, maybe? Nope. Really? University of Tennessee? Nope. Hmm. All the major state schools have the same undercurrent. See, we talk about Harvard. We talk about Yale. We talk about Princeton because they're the worst. They just play it out front. Right. Critical race theory is everywhere. If you go to Harvard's website, every department is, defines itself through the lens of critical race theory. Hmm. That's why I wrote critical theory. They're just open about it. The pedagogy... The philosophy of education these days has become is ubiquitous across all of higher ed. I mean, you know where the Marxists landed when they came over? The book I wrote before this one was Battle for the American Mind about the K-12 takeover, mm-hmm. the left-wing takeover of K-12 education. It took them 100 years. And they did it in large part by seating themselves in higher ed. Where did they first land, the Marxists from the Frankfurt School? At Columbia University. Oh, what is man. Columbia University? What was it then? What is it today? 
the number one teacher's college in America. And what did they come with? A theory called critical theory. Now, Marxists usually use class as the dividing factor. Class didn't work in America because of capitalism. Yep. So what did they use instead? They used race, which was our Achilles heel. That, so the teacher's college proliferated that everywhere. So you want people say, well, my kids are safe in Alabama or Florida or Tennessee. Maybe. Definitely the culture is better, but the philosophy is still the same. I mean, you look at something like who, who here took social studies? Social studies. Yeah, back in the day. Social yeah, studies? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> totally made up. It's a made up subject. It's not a real subject. Made up by progressives because they wanted to get rid of literature and theology and philosophy uh, and, and history and politics as individual disciplines wow. meant to seek truth. Veritas. Back mm -hmm. to your back to the when what's on the crest of Harvard, the Old Testament, the New Testament and the Testament to come, meaning Christ's return. Mm -hmm. That's what's on the shield. It was seeking actual truth. They've dissected all of that. So even schools that look more conservative. Wait, wait, let me South, get, let me get this. What you just said. Is that still on their crest? It is still on their yeah, crest. That's racist, racist. And, isn't and, it? Racist? No, no, but wait a minute. Do they even explain that like an orientation or no? Of course not. No. no. Absolutely not. Wait, can you pull this up, Rob? Harvard crest? <laughs> can you pull this up? So, yeah. so pull up the Harvard crest on what he was explaining and actually go up. What does Harvard's crest mean? Hmm. I want to know. Did you guys know this? How I many of no, you guys I, did I you knew know about this Veritas. Meaning? I didn't know about the Old Testament and the Zoom New Testament. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, look, at, look at the crest when you actually look at the shield. Harvard's um, recorded. Now they've, they, as they've moved on to, you know, like, go to, go to images, school. Rob. You'll see it in the foreground. The three open, yep, the three open books. So they don't even yeah, say what we know what it is. Are but that's exactly wow. How do you go from that to? So let me ask you, if you have, oh man, you know, so, so look at the three books. That's what the three yeah, books. There are it is. To represent so here, here's here's what's ah. crazy. So yes.